Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. All right, we have a lot to cover, okay? Tucker Carlson's in Dubai. He's left Russia, he's in Dubai, and a lot of things have happened. I want to play one clip, and this clip is Tucker Carlson in Dubai. He just returned from Russia, and he's talking about the condition of Russia versus the United States. What was radicalizing, very shocking and very disturbing for me was the city of Moscow, where I'd never been, the biggest city in Europe, 13 million people. And it is so much nicer than any city in my country. I had no idea. My father spent a lot of time there in the 80s when he worked for the U.S. government and barely had electricity. And now it is so much cleaner and safer and prettier aesthetically. It's architecture, it's food, it's service than any country, city in the United States that you have to. And this is not ideological. How did that happen? How did that happen? And at a certain point, I don't think the average person cares as much about abstractions as about the concrete reality of his life. And if you can't use your subway, for example, as many people are afraid to in New York City because it's too dangerous, you have to sort of wonder, like, isn't that the ultimate measure of leadership? And that's true. By the way, it's radicalizing for an American to go to Moscow. I didn't know that. I've learned it this week. To Singapore, to Tokyo, to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Because these cities, no matter how we're told they're run and on what principles they're run, are wonderful places to live. They don't have rampant inflation. We're not going to get raped. Sir, and excuse so, me. Okay. So he's at this organization called the World Governments Summit in mm-hmm. Dubai, right from Russia to there. And I, I want to talk about this quote and then the little clip I played, then we'll g- get into more about Tucker because all kinds of things have happened. And there's a couple of things that we need to be careful of which we'll get to as well. You know, what he just talked about, Trump talked a lot about in the first campaign, right? He talked a lot about our airports because he flies into the airports more than most people. He's got his own plane, Trump. And he was talking about how roads and airports in these countries around the world are spectacular. They're beautiful. And in this country, they're falling apart. And that is true. Um, You know, Kathy and I, we're we're in South Florida. You go to Miami, it's it's a dump. It's really an embarrassment. You know, when tourists come to... Florida is the best state, but when people go to Miami, it's really embarrassing that they think that's. Well, that, what you see Florida. is, you see, like the very there's like very rich part, and you see this in Palm Beach too, very rich part of the county, where you have the doctors mm-hmm. and the lawyers and the very wealthy live, which is very nice. It's usually typically by the ocean, and then some cities like Palm Beach or Miami, you get more inland. And it's like so bad. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like one well, or the other. Yeah, and, and what Tucker's talking about here, it's so beautiful in Russia and in, in New York, you can't ride the subway. The it's reason true. that things are the way they are in this country is because Democrats, mm-hmm. th- they spend too much money on loafers, pe- loaf, people, bums, okay? People living off the, off the, off the government, that, yeah. like, like the illegals they're bringing here. And they cater too much to a criminal mindset. They don't want to enforce crime. If you uh, have police officers who enforce crime, they're racist. Um, And that's what's going on. And also, our country, at every level, our elected officials are corrupt and on the take. Whether it's with the the, the guys that build the roads, the guys that build this, the guys that build – everyone in government, with rare exceptions, like – Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, handful of, and I'm talking about even our local governments. It's all corrupt and political payoffs. And in these other countries, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if they don't have that problem. Maybe they do, but they at least want to make sure that things look good. Well, the, Democrats they, have always loved having power over people. That's a, a personality trait they all yeah. share going back to the beginning of the party. And they can't have power over hardworking Americans that just want to mind their own business. But they can have power over people that are living on the streets, that are on drugs, Mm -hmm. uh, living in tents, that they're handing out food um, and money to and encouraging their homelessness. That makes them feel like they're do-gooders. It makes them feel like they're important and they're special. And that's what I think a lot of the motivation is for that too. And and this this forum that, that Tucker's at in Dubai today, this guy that is interviewing him was giving him a really hard time about his interview with Putin and how he conducted it. And he said, you should have asked him this. You should have done that. And Tucker said, I'm not going to go in there like every other American that's ever interviewed him. I'm going to let him talk. 
Right. As opposed to showboating about how tough I am or what I know and or I'm going to hold him accountable him yeah. and all this stuff. I, he, Tucker said, I wanted the American people to hear Putin and understand his viewpoint. Now, that does not mean that he or we or anyone agrees with Putin, but it's important for us to understand where Putin's coming from. Now, two things have come out of Tucker's trip to Russia. He talked to Tara Reid and Snowden, and he has interviewed both of them. At least that's what's being reported, okay? He has interviewed both Tara Reid and Snowden. I want to talk first about Tara Reid. Tara Reid is the woman who said that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her in the halls of the Senate where he really assaulted her with his hand. Okay, I'm not going to get more graphic than that. Right. Um, I have no reason to not believe Tara Reid's story, okay? Her story Well, because Joe Biden's such a sleaze. Yeah, her story is very detailed. She, when she tells her story, she's very specific about when it happened, where it happened, and, you know, things that could be verified. I mean, she could have accused him of doing something. He was with 10 other people somewhere else. So, you know, she's very, so I believe her story. Plus, like you said, Kathy, Biden's a sleaze. Right. But, he, but, but here's the thing about Tara Reid that we've got to be careful of. And I do believe her story, okay? I've, I've seen her interviewed and talking about her story, Tara Reid, so I am not questioning her story. But here's what we got to be careful. Tara Reid is in Russia. She fled to Russia some time ago. That's why Tucker interviewed her over there in Russia. And I remember when that first happened, it's a little strange, okay? Yeah. And there's a couple possibilities. Now, her, what, what she has said is that she went to Russia for her safety. And I can believe that. These, Maybe somebody threatened her. These Bidens are scary, scary people. Yeah. So she very well could have gone there for her safety. But there's a couple other possibilities, too. One, she could have defected to Russia. And, you know, she, you know, she's a lifelong Democrat. She's worked in the government her whole life. She's a Democrat. Yeah. And, and she could have been a spy for Russia, having, be, you know, f betraying her country and been working for Russia for many years. Or she could have been a Russian agent all along. OK, and you got this sleaze bucket, Joe Biden, and she might have gotten into a honeypot situation with him. But that. I do believe Tara Reid's story, but I think it's odd that she went to Russia. Well, okay? we'll find out because and, he interviewed her. Well, I don't expect her to tell the truth about no, this. No, but but sometimes you can gain insight from people oh, no, I'm even, when they're, the even when they're lying. Well, here, here's the thing, though. Like I say, I don't want anybody to think I'm attacking Tara Reid because I'm not. I do believe her story mm -hmm. about Joe Biden. But here's the problem, Okay. <sighs> You don't want to put too much into Tara Reid right now because it is possible that she's been a spy or defected to Russia, and she might have defected to them as a spy 20 years ago, even though she was still here, okay? And if, if any of that is true, the Bidens and this, these creeps that are running the government right now mm -hmm. could release all kinds of information showing that she's been a double agent or defected or been a spy for decades – and uh, even though what she says is true about her and Biden, we could be s putting ourselves in a position where they'll use that to discredit all the allegations against Biden. So I think I think with terror and I know some of you are going to disagree with me on this. I think it's just so strange. She went to Russia. So I think we got to be very careful with Tara Reid. I, I watched the interview. I do believe her story. And I'm looking forward to the, the interview. The truth is usually somewhere in the middle. But I just, some people. I'm just afraid, you know, because because she's a lifelong Democrat and worked in the government. Democrats are communist. So it, it would not be so far fetched that a lifelong Democrat like her mm -hmm. became a spy for Russia at some point. I'm not saying that she is, but I'm saying that it is very strange that right. she went to Russia. OK, so don't get too involved with Tara Reid because they could use Tara Reid to do what they really want to do more than anything else with Tucker Carlson, and that is discredit him. You know, Tucker Carlson is the most trusted man in America after Trump. He's the most trusted American journalist living today, and he's not just trusted by Americans. He's trusted around, by people around the world. That's how he got in with Putin. He's, he's credible. So 
Tara Reid could be if, – if any of these things that I mentioned are true, which I'm not saying they are, but if they are, they, they could use Tara Reid to discredit Tucker Carlson, and he's – doing such important work. Now, the, I'm interested in what Snowden, the, a lot of people want to hear. Well, Snowden, Snowden, now Snowden, now that's a good one. I, I'm really looking forward to the Snowden interview. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Snowden, who's in exile in Russia, Snowden kind of began what we're going through now, right? I mean, he exposed what the government was doing, spying on citizens. These, like, like the what happened to Trump at Trump Tower, what happened to to MAGA people who travel in the Washington area with their bank accounts that's coming out. Years ago, Snowden came out and exposed all of this that the NSA was doing. And that's why he's in Russia now. So he's kind of like the, I don't know what, what kind of title to give him, but Snowden is kind of like the, the, I don't know what he's kind of like, but he's the one that really kind of started this even before Trump, right? Mm-hmm. This me- mistrust that we have for the government was right. exposed by Snowden because Obama was president when when that stuff started to happen. So the Snowden interview is very, all these interviews are important, but. Do you think Tucker. You got to be a little careful with some of them because I, I'm worried about Tucker. I mean, yeah, I, I was just going to say, yeah, so, I am too. So I'm watching Tucker at this event in Dubai and I'm watching this jerk really just get nasty with him. Um, Tucker Carlson could could be with the, with the government we have running our country today could be in a lot of trouble. They could arrest him. They could, they're looking what they're looking to do or not let him back in. Yeah, is what I think might happen. They might revoke his visa. I mean, his passport and uh, label him a, a well a traitor or a well here's, treasonous or whatever the Logan Act thing or something. Well, here's the thing, Kathy yeah. Snowden. And I, I like Snowden. I'm a supporter of Snowden, and I'm very grateful that Edward Snowden did what he did and, and let people know what was going on. It's frightening, right? But he has committed treason, okay? So he is a traitor. He has committed treason right. against the United States. Terror, well, he, what, so ter- he worked for the government, and he released— He worked for the NSA and released NSA, classified okay, information. Now yeah. he's, he's defected to Russia. Okay. So Snowden— I know we all like Snowden and we all respect Snowden and we're very grateful that he sacrificed his entire life and very lucrative career for this. But he has committed treason and uh, under the law and is considered a traitor. Mm -hmm. Tara Reid is an unknown. I think it is very possible that she's a Russian spy or uh, from Russia or an American who became a Russian spy. Okay, And, and like I said at the beginning. She may have been a honeypot for Biden. It's not hard to set Biden up. You know what I mean? I, I'm not saying that's true. But And then Tucker interviewed Putin. Mm-hmm. So Tucker, you know, he's – Snowden, without question, is considered a traitor. Tara Reid, we don't know. And then he interviews Putin. These people have arrested a president of the United States, Donald well, Trump. exactly. So if all these things <laughs> – These they, people aren't following the rules. A lot of people think – because I'm not the only one talking this way. A lot of people I hear, they say, oh, well, you know, he's so high profile. They could never do this to Tucker. If if they can arrest multiple times a president of the United well, States Trump always says. who's done no wrong, what are they going to – a guy like Tucker who talks to a foreign leader that America is in a conflict with because Biden's got us on Ukraine's side in this war. Um, Snowden has committed treason. And then Tara Reid, we don't really know. Yet, okay, so they could release some stuff about her. Those three contacts they could use to arrest him when he comes back and put him in in a, in a jail cell like Julian Assange, okay. And if you think they're they're not capable of that, you're kidding yourself. There's 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 no one that is above them persecuting because they did it to a president of the United well, States. Trump Donald always Trump. says that if they can do it to me, they're gonna they can do it to you. How many times has he said that? On his speeches, you know, if they do it to me, they'll do it to you. It's it, exactly and that's what he's talking about. Exactly. You know, I had Alan Dershowitz on this program a couple times, and he had some false allegations against him. And he was, ch- and I said, Alan Dershowitz, I mm-hmm. said, you are the most famous lawyer in America. Right. If they could do this to you, what's somebody like me? And he's like, you're you're done, Brian. He said they, they could do anything to you. Well, remember what Chuck Schumer said. That's right. <laughs> 
The so, the scurry is six ways. So you know the you don't go against the government. He so, said because the, the, they they you know they'll screw up your life. That's right. They have ultimate power. And uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens with Tucker. Uh, I don't know how long he's going to be overseas. If there's anybody else on his list to interview, he might, you know, but I worry, like I said, about him not being allowed back in or arrested. But but at the same time, um, you know, they'd have to. It's so high profile and he's so high profile. They'd have to really be specific on the specific law. He's break. Of course, look what they do with Trump. They just say it. And, you know, exactly. Um. But it'll be interesting. Now, they might just let it go because they might think, well, if we arrest him, we're going to make him like a Nelson Mandela type. No, and they don't care. And Kathy. he is going to be even more powerful. He does. They, 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 they look what they're doing to Trump. OK. Yeah. And, but that's so, what I'm saying. And so then they he's don't, getting more powerful. Uh, he's getting more popular. And these J6 prisoners, you know, that they got. So uh, Tucker Carlson is taking a risk greater than any American journalist has ever taken. I agree with you. And um, it's I, – I worry about him. Do you him. think it's he's scary. worried that something might happen when he comes home? You know, home? It's, it's hard to say because I, I was watching him at this forum in Dubai, and he's getting interviewed by this foreigner. He's like, well, Hillary Clinton has said that. And he's like, well, I don't care what – how's Libya doing? I don't care about what Hill, exactly. Mrs. Clinton has to say. But exactly. these Nobody are – Nobody does. But, well, but the – the, these lawfare people that are running the country right now do. And I don't know. Are, do you think Hillary Clinton still has? I don't think she's a power I don't player mean, no, anymore. No, 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 no. I don't mean Hillary. I mean that group of oh, people. Yeah. So he is challenging these lawfare people that have arrested a president of the United States multiple times. So yeah. the, the risks that Tucker Carlson is taking oh, yeah. with this Russia trip it would not be difficult for them to arrest him for treason when he gets back between the Snowden contact, the Putin contact, and then Tara Reid's an unknown. So far, nothing has happened. We mm. haven't heard anything. Well, he hasn't come back yet. But that does it right, and that doesn't mean they're not planning. Now, it just got announced on Breitbart that Kirby has been promoted to – I've never heard of this position – Assistant to the president. Is that a position? I always thought it was chief of, chief of staff. No, they, they, they is just, assistant to the president. Isn't that the vice president to be the assistant? No, what is the assistant? To no, the they, president? they give when uh, they give people these George Stephanopoulos had a position, special advisor to the president. OK, they give they promote these people to these new positions that really mean anything. OK, and, so and, why is this? What is significant about this Kirby? Promotion? OK, here's what I see. He's okay. a military. Kirby guy. is a retired admiral. Right. who's a very weird guy. And he was the press secretary at the Pentagon for a while. This is what I think is going on with Kirby. And, you know, I mean, this is all just happening. The defense secretary, Lloyd Austin's back in like critical care over the weekend, right? He got oh, the out black of, guy? Yeah, the black guy, oh. yeah, Lloyd Austin, the secretary. The one who didn't announce his cancer. So, and, oh, and, and, uh, and, um, mm. Kirby or uh, Biden's checked out, right? We saw this, this report yeah. that came out just last week. I think they're bringing Kirby in to run the military. Uh, illegally, unofficially and illegally. I think Kirby is being uh, getting this new position so he can run the military from Could the White House. Could he do that from yeah. where he is now? Or is this is this a way of giving him, making a, like, well, this is why he's at the White House so much because he's this is his new position. You know what I mean? This is a way of explaining his presence. He, he's got to be, yeah. You know what I mean? Is that what I'm he's saying? He's got to be around the Oval Office and they got to make it look like Biden's still running the show. Right. But Kirby is probably the... The commander of all our military. Trump members. said in his last speech that Obama was running the government, which a lot of people think. And, you know, if anybody would know, it'd be Trump. And I, I have said that many times that I think Obama, because you just look at the, what's happening in the country. And it's definitely somebody that thinks like Obama, somebody that hates America, somebody who's racist against um, a lot of Americans, somebody who, who uh, wants to keep the border open. Um, and who isn't a fan of Israel and you see the, the, what's happening right now. And, um, it would make sense that this is, uh, you know, well, Obama doing things. Here's, here's the thing because the government's being run illegally right now. You know, um, Biden's press conference on Thursday, that weirdo press conference, the white house mm. took that down off the official white oh, house it was YouTube a, it was, channel. It was a disaster. Since Obama cannot legally run the country or, or openly and efficient, officially, he's off wherever he's at. Right. He can't run the day to day. So he, Obama is running the big picture, but there's, there's other people that are running the day to day operations that they're, that he is 
giving authority over to because he can't openly be running the government. So yeah, different the, the different uh, departments of the federal government are probably running themselves by their right. secretaries. Kirby is going to be running the military at the White House. You know, uh, Jill probably has a role running some things, making sure things get signed. I don't know. So do you think Merrick Garland's going to get fired now? You think? Oh, that'd be the best. I read that that would begin. That'd be the beginning of the end for this report that came out in in office from the from uh, about Biden being incompetent and and too um, old and feeble to to prosecute, Mm -hmm. um, I think was more damaging to him than if they did impeach him or something. And he was clearly not happy because he spoke on it twice. And then he did this impromptu press conference last week at the last minute, which uh, Neil Cavuto on Fox said that or somebody on Fox. I can't remember. I was flipping around or CNN. One of the other said that he, um, probably on Fox that he his staff did not want him to do this. Mm-hmm. And he did it anyway. They can't control him like they thought they could. Um, and he did this horrible press conference, which was a disaster and messing up, screwing up and this and that, saying all these crazy things. And it only solidified, it had the opposite effect. He wanted to come out there and show the world he is competent and be like, this This report is BS and this and that. He only solidified the report and, and solidified what we already know, yeah. that he's feeble. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. And- but I don't – and then Kamala came out to defend him. She is not going to invoke the 25th for whatever reason. That would have been her opportunity last week to do it. And I almost feel like the DOJ set it up for that. But for some reason, I don't know what it is. She's either afraid or she just will not do that. Maybe they've talked to her about it and she refuses. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I she think she could no, become the first there, female president and minority. Why is she not invoking? What is holding well, her back? She did, What's stopping? She her? did say a couple days ago to the press. They asked her about all this stuff, and she says, "I'm ready to lead." Well, but she so, has yet so to invoke that they may, amendment. They may be building up to it. I don't know, but I do want to tell you guys: she'll never this. win an election uh, <laughs> ever. She doesn't shoot. It does, she doesn't have to win if she. No, but I'm saying in, in this year when the if, re-election. If she invoked the 25th amendment, yeah, she'd be the first and became female the president, and became yeah. the president. Okay, she'd be the first female president, and she's a minority, yeah. right? Yeah, she would have a place in the history books Absolutely. forever with Susan B. Anthony and all these people. So why doesn't she do it? Maybe they're in the process of doing it. I mean, I don't you wouldn't know. have to convince me twice. I mean, they would name. I was talking to someone on my morning show about this today. They would name schools after her. There'd be statues of her. She might get her face on a coin or something. She, she down would the eventually. Road. She'd be on money down the road. Yeah, schools after yeah, her. Yeah, no matter be, how bad she she'd was. be on. So you know, but the fact that she said she's ready to lead, I've never heard her say that before. That you know, and so you th- do you think she's going to do that? I, I don't know what to, what to see. I don't know. I don't know. But it, it, there's something going on now. I do want to tell you guys this: uh, there are a whole bunch of new specials at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane. A whole bunch, including uh, you can save up to fifty percent off on the mattress toppers, depending on which one you get, and free shipping uh, with our promo code Kane at checkout. K A N E is still in effect, and I don't know how long that's going to be. I checked right before uh, the program here. Free shipping is still available. Uh, the MyPillow six-piece towel set, those are 50% off. There are a whole bunch of new massive specials at MyPillow.com. And remember, not only do you get that discount, like 50% off the uh, the towel set or up to 50% off the mattress topper, you also get free shipping on top of that special with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. And when you do that, you're supporting this program, all my content, and of course, Mike Lindell. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I want to say one last thing before we break with Kama. The one thing we do know about her and the 25th is it's not up to her, okay? This is not a decision she will get to make. Mm-hmm. This is up to the deep state, Obama, the powers that be. They will decide whether she invokes it or not. And I'm wondering if they have told her to and she won't do it. Or if she's waiting on them to give yeah. her the go ahead, what, what do you guys think? Well, do you think she's afraid, or do you think she's well, waiting for them to well, say do it? Merrick Garland is a cabinet member, right? I Trade mean, now General. is a perfect opportunity. So, so they already got one cabinet member who signed off on it because he released the report exactly. And then her saying she's ready to lead—that's two, right? 
You know? So it's possible. It's so so it, there very well could be something in play. Now, we're going to take our first break. Don't go anywhere. There's so much more to talk about. We've just started. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. How would you like to transform your living space? You can at Tuvrik.com. That's T-O-V-R-I-K. Tuvrik.com is your premier destination for quality living. They have a carefully curated selection of lifestyle essentials that are designed to elevate every aspect of your home. From chic decor to functional furniture, they have it all. Looking for that perfect touch for your kitchen? Maybe an elegant addition to your bathroom? No problem. Tuvrik.com has a huge selection of choices in home decor, kitchen essentials, and those bathroom accessories you've been searching for. You can illuminate your home with their lighting selection and discover the latest in home electronics and advanced tech. Their furniture collection blends style with comfort and can transform any room. And don't forget about your furry family members. Tuvrig.com's pet supplies cater to their needs with love and care. And if you're an outdoor enthusiast, check out their patio, lawn, and garden selections. With fast shipping, easy returns, and a commitment to customer satisfaction, Tuvrig.com ensures a seamless shopping experience. So what are you waiting for? Start shopping right now at Tuvrik.com. T-O-V-R-I-K. And begin your journey towards a beautiful, functional, and more joyful living space. Tuvrik.com. Your premier destination for quality living. In today's world, being secure and safeguarding yourself, your home, your business, and most importantly, your family is more important than ever. District 35 Security and Investigations is your trusted partner when it comes to comprehensive crime prevention and investigative services. Founded in 2017 by the Taylor family and rooted in 40 years of experience, District 35 Security and Investigations are dedicated to offering tailored solutions that meet your unique needs. They specialize in both civil and criminal criminal investigations. Their team employs extensive expertise and cutting-edge resources to deliver thorough, meticulous investigative solutions. They also provide a diverse range of security services, including risk assessment, security consulting, and specialized training programs that are all designed to enhance your safety and your peace of mind. They've played a pivotal role in deterring crime, safeguarding properties, and instilling a sense of security with their clients. District 35 Security and Investigations is licensed to operate in all 250 54 Texas counties. Whether you're seeking to protect your family, your business, or your property, their team is here to offer the peace of mind that you deserve. Take charge of your security and contact them right now online at district35-securityinvestigations-llc.us or call them directly 512-216-6211. That's 512-216-6211. District 35 Security and Investigations. Your safety is their mission. Enter the future of Tokyo in the year 4024, where the adventure of a lifetime is waiting for you in Avalanche Sky. It's a new anime book series created by author D.V. Dennis. Avalanche Sky is filled with spellbinding illustrations that bring each page to life. It's a realm where five magical girls from Earth are chosen to ascend to Starbase Number 1, the celestial bridge between galaxies. Avalanche Sky is filled with 185 action-packed pages with full-color illustrations, with stunning high-gloss covers, and a fusion of hand-drawn art and graphic design mastery, you'll enjoy the quality with high-grade paper. And for those of you that are collectors, there's a hardcover version too. Join the Kickstarter campaign today. Just go to kickstarter.com and search Avalanche Sky. Secure your early copy with exclusive cover art, unique book hardware, and special details just for backers of the Kickstarter campaign. These limited Kickstarter editions are a must-have for collectors and anime enthusiast. Join the adventure and become a part of Avalanche Sky. Go to kickstarter.com and search Avalanche Sky. And you can follow the book launch online at avalanche-sky.com. Reserve your copy right now. It's time to get your life organized and do it in a fun and colorful way with Boxia World on Etsy. That's B-O-X-I-A. At Boxia World on Etsy, you'll find a huge array of colorful and functional storage boxes that are tailored to meet all your organizational needs. Everything is crafted from high quality fabric. These boxes seamlessly complement your Kalix set, infusing your space with a delightful splash of color. They're perfect to organize your kid's room, your office, your classroom, or any space 
space that you want to organize. From dark green and rich pink to lively orange, you'll find a huge selection of colors and shades at Boxia World on Etsy. Go to the shop right now at boxiaworld.etsy.com. That's B O X I A. Boxiaworld.etsy.com. Make sure to use the promo code radio. Boxiaworld.etsy.com. Boxia World on Etsy. Your world in vivid colors. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So there was this shooting over the weekend at Joel Olstein's church and th- what we're learning we're learning that they uh the gun woman is pro-palestinian and is transgender and is a biological male uh i'll just read mm. this uh, story a trans female shooter who opened fire at joel olstein's lakewood church on sunday had a free palestine message written on her weapon per a new report and you know even His weapon yeah uh, the evangelical churches are very pro-Israel, and it's not unusual in an evangelical yeah. church for them to have the Israeli flag on display. Uh, the shooter has been identified as Janice, something I can't, uh, Yvonne Marino, who previously used the name Jeffrey and has a lengthy criminal record, including assault, marijuana possession, forgery, mm. and uh, it goes on. And also had this Free Palestine thing. You know, this is like the third or fourth shooter. In the last few months, that's been transgender. Remember the, that monster that shot the little kids at yeah. that school in Nashville? Was All of a sudden, trans- you're going to stop hearing about sh- these shootings in the news. There was one in, in um, Kentucky. There was one that yeah. was stopped somewhere else in Colorado. Um, and I'm not sure why there's this if it, it, this trend. It, it could be the hormones. It, it could be all kinds of things. I don't know. I know, but, you but know, I know, but I know this. I just, when you mess with hormones, that's definitely yeah. They're all like in women in menopause. It's, you know, it's well, <laughs> I wouldn't go around and do that. But it's when you mess with people's natural hormones, it's you know, like Doctor Frankenstein. I mean, it could be a bad outcome here. You know what I mean? And you combine that already with somebody who could be suffering from mental illness. Um, that's not a good thing to well, do. Well, the way the way it works, I mean, this is. Because the shooters it are not fitting the narrative that they want to promote. That's right. So these ki- these stories disappear right That's away. That's what I said. You're going to stop seeing this. You stuff know. In the news. So if it's a white guy and they're straight, that that'll be all over the place. Gotta, but now that we've got this this trend, I don't, don't want to use epidemic because that's like a liberal term for these things. We've got these this trend of trans shooters, right. and at least two of them now have been against Christians, right? Joel Olstein's church, and then that. That school in Nashville was a Christian school. Yeah. So at least two of them have been Christian targets. So these are like hate crimes. Well, he has very good security, which he should, because that place seats like 100,000 people. It's crazy. And he sh- sure as hell makes enough money. But they nobody was injured other than the shooter was killed. And uh, he went in with a kid, like a five-year-old kid who was injured. Not in, is okay, but I think was injured. But the shooter was killed and nobody else was hurt. So Joel Osteen, I don't like Joel Osteen, but I certainly don't want anybody attacking his church. But good for him for having top-notch security. At least he's using that money for a good reason, to help protect the people that go mm-hmm. there. Because let me tell you, that shooter got nobody. Nobody. Mm-hmm. And that's um, that's pretty good. It's like that one uh, church we saw where there was a shooter and and one of the ushers had a gun. The, the the church had allowed some of the ushers to have guns, and it was an ex police officer. But that shooter managed to kill a couple people before the usher got him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good that the usher was there, or would have killed more. But this this person got nobody. So, so he must have very good security because it was there were people there. It was in between. Uh, services on Sunday, and I saw a video or a picture. There were a lot of people in that church, so it wasn't empty. I mean, there were a few thousands of people there. Well, it looks to me to be a hate crime. So after sure. after today, that story will disappear. Now, he, yeah, so Kamala did this interview with the Wall Street Journal. Here, here's what she said. Oh, boy. I am ready to serve. 
There's no question about that. Kamala Harris, age 59, stated in an interview with the Wall Street Journal when we're just, asked we're just not ready for her. about the 81-year-old president's age. Kamala added that anyone who watched her in her current role as vice president walks away fully aware of my capacity to lead. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm-hmm. God help us. So this is, you know, a lot of these things that happen like this, you know, in these discussions like this and in this interview is to gauge what the public reaction will be to it. And, and, and what do you think the reaction is going to well, be? Well, it depends to, on who you are. If you're a Democrat, well, I mean, you know, the Democrats want Biden out. Yeah, but they want her. I mean, she she would be a disaster. Have, has, has, have you guys seen her speak lately? Oh, yeah. She makes zero sense when she talks. I don't know. They call it the word salad. I don't know what the hell goes on in her head, but she just literally makes no sense when she starts to talk. Can you imagine her? Yeah. Leading the country. No. And I, no. I think it's scary. I wonder whose decision it was to choose her because she had no popularity. Nobody liked her. I know he wanted a black woman, but there were other black women that are certainly more qualified than who. her. I, I, I know exactly that who. he could have chosen. Was, I mean, um, she's a moron. It was Obama. Um, and we, we talked about this at the time. Well, yeah. You said he's friends with okay, her. Okay. The f- well, more. Um, during the first Democrat debate, she humiliated Biden by bringing up his racist past. So they hate her. Yeah. Obama got Biden to pick her. And a lot of people think they had an affair. Oh, I don't God. know. I don't know. But that, a lot of people think that. But She looks like the scarecrow from The Wizard of mm-hmm. Oz. But, well, you know, Obama's a dork, you know. But Obama is the one who got her um, picked by Biden. They, because the Bidens hate her. Well, they're stuck with both of them, and they're both a disaster. But it's going to be it's going to be Trump now. Jasmine Crockett, she's a uh, a Democrat congresswoman, and she's she was on MSNBC today talking about Trump. I truly don't understand how and why anyone can see that this guy is a viable candidate. We are talking about someone that literally may start World War Three. It is just that deep. He's he ends wars. He doesn't yeah. start them. World War Three's already started. Biden he? Biden started World War Three when he started backing Ukraine against Russia. I think these days, with a lot of Democrats, I think this kind of rhetoric is falling on deaf ears now. Yeah, because it's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, they've said it so many times, and none of it comes true. So what happens after a while? You stop listening. Mm-hmm. You stop believing it because you're like. Okay, you said yeah. this six months ago. You said this five years ago. Yeah, and it's it never happened. They live in a fantasy world, and all and they 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 speak in hyperboles, and everything they say is so over the top, and it never comes to fruition. And I think people are like I said, they have perspective now, and they're looking back and they're realizing that these are all you know people that are basically lying or or spitting out. These false, these false statements. Well, what you're just frightening you know, people. What you're seeing is because they're see like like see, Michael Rappaport. He was a perfect yeah. example. He was interviewed. This guy hated Trump, and he said on an interview I watched the other day, he was being interviewed by uh, Bet David and a couple other guys, I think. Yeah. And he said, for example, with the that um, thing that happened in Charlottesville when Trump said there's good people mm-hmm. on both sides. He said that infuriated me. He said, but then he said, I look back and I read the whole quote and I realize now that the media took it completely out of context. And he said, I ate it up because I didn't like the guy. And he said, but now I see how they've twisted his words. He's on the Trump train, this guy. Well, it's incredible. You know, the the thing about the Democrats years ago, the Democrats, they've always been crazy and everything, but. They had successfully conned the American people into believing their rhetoric. So they always kind of had their finger on the pulse of the American people. Now they don't. They're completely out of touch with the American people. They don't know it. And they're getting creamed. I mean, they're just getting creamed. That's a good – we don't want them to get it. They're getting people creamed. People just aren't buying their BS anymore. But they're – yeah, the, the people of the country have zero, less than zero – confidence in anything anyone in the government says unless their name's trump or marjorie right. taylor green they people just don't trust the government for good reason they and they see what they've done to trump they see what's going on in ukraine this thing with biden where biden came out and said he was with it so then biden's talking today about uh you know what, what does he call us MAGA republicans mother's father's 
sit down at a kitchen table with an empty chair. Folks, my top for me is to add, that's why I asked Dr. The, to, Dr. Vivek Murthy, Admiral Murthy. Oh my God. He can't even talk. I mean, this is scary. To be the Surgeon General because to make mental health a, a, a national priority. We're expanding community clinics, mobile unit clinics, working to treat causes of addiction while cracking down on deadly fentanyl trafficking. Folks, they're not doing anything. We spent months working on a bipartisan border bill that included the most humane, fair reforms in our immigration system ever. Yeah, which, which means legalize illegal immigration. Incredible. It also included the toughest set of reforms to secure the border ever. It was a win for the American people, a win for your counties. No, it's not. But some of my extreme Republican friends, and by the way, this is not your father's Republican Party. I don't mean to take, I'm not taking on all Republicans. I really mean it. The MAGA Republicans, a minority, but a powerful minority, they went out and they killed the deal. My predecessor said he didn't like it. It was a loss for him. We have to end the political games, folks. Okay. So Biden there, I mean, he sounds really out of it. But the reason I I played it, when when he said there about MAGA Republicans, they're a minority, but they're a vocal minority. Right. Biden's powerful. out of it. He said a powerful, pa- powerful minority. vocal minority, but they're a minority. That's not true. No. The The MAGA Republicans are not a minority. They are the majority right. of the Republicans. They're, they may not be the ma- – you know, MAGA Republicans, you know, I'll use his term, you know, we, we, we embrace all of them, deplorables, all this stuff. When he, he talks about good Republicans and bad Republicans, anytime you have a Democrat talking about good Republicans, you want to run away from those Republicans, right? But what he's talking about are the Republicans that are in Congress, right? Like Mitt Romney, the ones that are in government, you know, like the governor of Georgia. He's, those are the good Republicans to him. Mitt Romney and all these kind of, well, kind of, kind of people. They want to divide the Republican Party. There's already a divide there. They want to, they want to make that chasm even bigger. Yeah. So by distinguishing – Real Republicans from MAGA Republicans. Yeah. That's a tactic to divide the party. And a lot of people eat that up and, and buy into that. There's still people that but, love but DeSantis see, and, and that's don't true. like Trump. And you know, they're still out there. The Republican Party of Florida over the weekend endorsed Trump for president. It took him this long. You know, and it, well, it, they were waiting to see what DeSantis it, was going to do. It shows you where the establishment is. See, the. The establishment, which Biden's a part of, but the establishment of the Republican Party, part of this uniparty, they still think – and I'm not, this is not going to happen, but I'm talking about what they think, okay? They're, they're crazy. They got yeah. the Trump terrain. They're crazy. They think that there is still a way for them to keep Trump off the ballot through this January 6th trial in D.C. Yeah, we might get a, and, a verdict on that this week and the what, Supreme Court. Maybe. And, and see – Nikki Haley's losing these primaries, but yeah. in a lot of these states, when you lose, you still get some delegates. Right. So what they're – and this is Nikki Haley. What they think is possible is that by the time we get to the convention months from now, yeah. that they're going to be able to keep Trump off the ballot. Nikki Haley will be in second place with her delegates, and then they'll have a broker convention. And then since she's in second place, she'll get – She'll get the nomination. They still think that's possible. I know that's crazy. That's what they're plotting, that's, but it's it's not going to work. Well, but, yeah, but they think it might. Yeah. Well, they they've thought a lot of things, and that's insane. They thought Trump would be off the ballot in these states, mm-hmm. and the Supreme Court, I promise you, is going to rule soon that that's that you can't do that. These people are out of their minds. So well, then, yeah. so then Biden was talking about uh, prices. Growth is strong. Wages are wages are rising. Inflation is down. In fact, the costs have fallen from from a gallon of gas to a gallon of milk. We know prices are still too high because of what I call greedflation and shrinkflation. He's what, what? just slurring his words I mean, all together. And he's not My drunk. He's just gracious. Out. Now, uh, inflation prices since he came into office three years ago, right? Overall prices are up 17.3%, and gas prices as of today are 30% higher than when he came into office. So that what he said just is not true. I just can't when I do the grocery shopping every week and I can't believe the prices of things. I mean it's definitely especially like lunch meats and and things like that and I've said this before because I buy a lot of the same things um every week and the cost of milk, eggs, bacon, everything is double, triple. Oh yeah. 
Um, I don't know how these families make it. Uh, you know, if, if this was happening when Emily was little, because our budget was a lot tighter back then when we were first starting out, like all young couples, um, we were definitely living like paycheck to paycheck. And, and when we were in our third, early thirties and I was even working then I was teaching and you were working and we were still having a hard time because it's expensive living here. We had a kid and we were paycheck to paycheck and a hundred dollars a week or $50 a week for some people can make or break them. Oh yeah. But you know, and now Biden came out blaming retailers for shrinkflation. That, that's not even a, a, a tank of gas now, $50. Yeah. And now Biden's blaming the companies because they're, they're giving less product for the same price. And he's right. They are doing that, but that's not their fault. That's his fault. But I have noticed certain things I buy, or if we go out to restaurants, cause we'll go to the same places. If they don't increase the prices of things, now McDonald's is getting ready to raise their prices soon because they're paying their employees more money because of the strikes and stuff. But if a per- if a place hasn't increased their prices, they're definitely giving you less yeah, product absolutely. for the same. I've seen it in grocery mm-hmm. stores mm-hmm. and things like that. It's subtle. It's subtle. Like, Well, open up a bag of Lay's potato chips and look how few chips are Yeah, there. you might have a little less chips. It's a subtle change. That's but that shrink really pay it, that's, Yeah, so Biden's blaming that. He takes zero responsibility for what he's done. So now it's the corporation's fault they're, that, for the shrinkflation, that they're doing it for, for no reason just to take advantage of people. I mean, yeah. my goodness now, gracious. Now, this is the uh, Secretary of State for Colorado who brought that case to the Supreme Court to right. keep Trump off the ballot in Colorado. She was on CNN today. Oh, yeah. States like Colorado believe that it is confusing and potentially suppressive to put a candidate on a ballot who cannot assume office. That's why, just like that non-natural born citizen, uh, we kept Donald Trump off because he is disqualified in, in, from our perspective under the Constitution for being an oath-breaking insurrectionist. Oh, my God. Well, that's her opinion. Well, uh, sh- you just can't. OK, Here, here's the thing. In America, uh, Trump did nothing wrong, by the way. No one's been charged with insurrection. And that's, you know, Merrick Garland, Biden's own Justice Department has not charged anyone with insurrection. You just can't say you're an insurrectionist. You can't hold office. In this country, we have due process. You have to be charged, tried, and convicted. You just can't deem someone guilty of a crime, which is what she's doing. And that Supreme Court last week that was amazing that even the liberals, the one that was appointed by Obama, or not Obama, but uh, uh, Biden, might as well, maybe it was Obama, Katanji, even she was on Trump's side there. Well, she made the, she just made the argument that the Supreme Court, because we listened to that whole thing that was fascinating. That oh, was great. And she just made their argument. She said, in, in our opinion, well, that's what they said. The Supreme Court said, this is so subjective. And why should one person or two people in a state who have a certain opinion be allowed to keep somebody off a ballot? And that's what she's saying here. In our opinion, he's not qualified. Exactly. Well, that doesn't mean he's not qualified. He hasn't been charged or he hasn't been convicted of anything. He hasn't exactly. even been charged with insurrection. So because it's her opinion, people in her state, it's her decision, it's her opinion, her belief that they shouldn't be allowed to vote. It's not confusing for people. That, you know, I mean, liberals just love to say that people are confused all the time. Like, you know, like black people don't know how to get an ID. I mean, that's their way of they think we're stupid. It's not confusing, but she's making the case for the Supreme Court when she said, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem, because I heard many of the justices say, even on the left, they said, well, that's too subjective. That's not based Mm -hmm. on any law. That's right. And that's the problem. Every state. That's right. Then it'll be complete chaos. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, she's a lawyer. She's, you know, and they they take these lawyers, they go to court and they say, you just can't say you are you are a criminal who's guilty of this crime when there's been no no charges. There's been no trial. There's been no conviction. You know, this is just bizarre. Now, I want to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. And remember, those of you who are Patreon supporters, check back the Patreon uh, page often. Kath and I upload things there all the time. Of course, commercial-free editions of all the podcast episodes. But there's a lot of content that Kathy uploads, that I upload, that we put up there all the time that no one else has access to uh, that you get to see. And if you are a Patreon supporter, I want to thank all of you. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter – 
There's a link in the description of this and every episode to our Patreon page. Now, our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Alice, Richard, Maria in Texas, David, Heather, Arctic Fox, Kmac, Lizep, Shauna, Constance, and George. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you for your support. And again, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter of the program, There is a link in the description of this and every episode. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's much more to cover. My name is Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. The new sci-fi novel from author Tony Travis is now available on Amazon. Keyholes. Keyholes is a journey of discovery. Meet Dr. Alan Messman and his brother, Colonel Bryce Messman, as they uncover a groundbreaking revelation, a mysterious portal influenced by quantum effects on photons. Join their team on a quest to unravel the secrets hidden behind the keyhole. What lies beyond? A passage to the past? An alternate world? Or something beyond our wildest imaginations? Find out. When you read Keyholes from author Tony Travis, follow their journey as it challenges the very nature of reality, intertwining cosmic mysteries with a deep exploration of identity and existence. Every page is a gateway to another layer of mystery, leading to a climax that will leave you questioning the very fabric of our universe. Order your copy of Keyholes from author Tony Travis on Amazon, available in Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and Kindle Unlimited. Keyholes from author Tony Travis on Amazon. Podcast listeners, are you looking for a fresh new podcast? Then add Journeyman Commentator to your podcast playlist right now. Hosted by the hilariously insightful Andrew Self. Journeyman Commentator is a twist on sports podcast. Andrew covers the world of English soccer with wit and humor that's simply unmatched. You'll be hooked from the very first episode. Andrew shares his thoughts and the hilarious stories about his travels to and from the matches. Each episode is a blend of sports, laughter, and unforgettable commentary. Journeyman Commentator is available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever you get your podcast. It's perfect to listen to on your way to or home from work. Share the podcast on all your social media so your friends can add Journeyman Commentator to their playlist too. Journeyman Commentator with host Andrew Self. Start listening right now. Travel back in time into American history with the new book from author Mike Runyon, Sins of the Party, Democrats, the Slave Owners Party, available on Amazon. Sins of the Party is a collection of firsthand accounts telling the inside story of the political landscape in America in the 1800s over the question of owning slaves. When you read Sins of the Party, you'll experience the stark contrast between the Democrats, then known as the Slave Owners Party, and the Republicans, the abolitionists. These writings from both sides of the political aisle illuminate the intense struggle in the ideological battles of the time. In the second half of the book, you'll be drawn into the personal account of a fugitive slave's bid for freedom. He was running from the horrors of slavery and in hiding in Boston. Living in fear of the Fugitive Slave Act, his story of resilience and his perilous journey to escape the chains of slavery is told. Sins of the Party is a history lesson and it's also an immersive experience that brings to life the intense emotions the moral dilemmas, and the courageous acts that shaped the nation. It's also a testament to the enduring spirit of those who fought against oppression and a reminder of the lessons history teaches us. And for teachers, Sins of the Party makes a great addition to your classroom reading collection. Sins of the Party, Democrats, the Slave Owners Party, from author Mike Runyon, is available on Amazon. Order your copy right now and discover the untold stories of America's struggles with slavery and the fight for freedom. From author Patricia J. Marino comes a book that explores the American experience like never before. We have all been the others. Reflections of a first-generation's daughter on belonging, democracy, and a new American dream. Available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. Drawing from the wisdom of her Sicilian-American father, former detective Alexander Francis Marino, the author offers universal lessons that resonate with our current American landscape. From confronting hypocrisy to the pursuit of fairness, each chapter 
chapter unfolds a timeless truth. This unique memoir through history examines the original promise of America through the lens of the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the United States Constitution. We Have All Been the Others invites readers to re-envision a new America. In the words of Langston Hughes, let America be America again. Chapters include Laws Don't Always Equal Right, Call Out Hypocrisy, and Strive to Learn Toughness Through Adversity. Author Patricia J. Marino weaves personal stories with historical insights, exploring the concept of the other and the collective immigrant experience. With this must-read book, you'll embrace our shared heritage, understand our past, and build a more inclusive future. This book is perfect for book clubs and is also a great addition for teachers' classroom reading collection. Order your copy of We Have All Been the Others, Reflections of a First Generation's Daughter on Belonging, Democracy, and a New American Dream. Available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. I wanted to talk about this foot-washing Christian ad on the Super Bowl last night. We saw it last night live. And it caught me off guard to see the the Christian ad there, and then you go back and wash it, wash it, watch the foot washing ad, and it, it's it's pretty disturbing. Um, I wouldn't call it uh, at the. I'm talking to my phone. I wouldn't call it a Christian. Well, ad. it was supposed to. I, yeah, exactly. It was it's a woke ad. Definitely not a Christian. Um, there was um, someone washing the feet of a of a girl in front of a abortion clinic. Yeah. There was a priest at the end washing the feet of a transgendered person. Yeah. There were well, a guy in a priest costume. Yeah. There were a lot of images of white people washing people's feet. There were, and there was not, you didn't see any white people getting their feet washed by any minorities. And what the ad was about, it's a critical race theory ad, is what it is. It's it, white people have to atone to all these different groups. There was one ad where a white woman, was washing the feet of an illegal in front of a bus. Yeah. You know, it was it was an ad that white people need to atone for the sins of racism that are caused by white people. There I mean, were it many was messages really disturbing. in that ad. Oh, and, yeah, countless. And, all, and, it, and it's, it's the foot washing is basically they were saying that Jesus, um, this is what Jesus would do because Jesus, there's a part in the Bible where he washes the feet of, of the the apostles or one of the apostles, I can't remember offhand to show his humility and to show that uh, the least of you will be the greatest and all this thing. And, uh, you know, because back in the biblical times, your feet were the dirtiest because you wore sandals. There was sandy everywhere. Everybody's feet were filthy. So washing feet was definitely a thing. Um, I don't know if they didn't have showers and stuff like that. I mean, they did have baths and everything, but I'm sure foot washing was very common um, because your feet were so dirty all the time. So that was a sign of Jesus humbling himself to somebody. And so they're basically saying that uh, Jesus, that the message you said is true, critical race theory, but also another message I, I got that they were trying to send was that Jesus is, would approve of all this kind of stuff, that he would approve of the transgender, approve of the abortions, approve of this. Jesus spread love. He never spread a message of hate or or anything like that, but he did tell people to stop sinning. Like when the woman uh, that they were going to stone, she was an adulterer, which was against the Jewish law, and he saved her life, but he said to her, now go and sin no more. Mm-hmm. He also told people they would be judged and by him when they die. So Jesus is not... That that whole commercial was like Jesus approves uh, of the illegals. He approves of abortion. He appro- you know you just need to accept it all. It was it was geared towards Christians and it was geared towards young people. They're twisting the Bible and they're giving the message that all this is okay and that Jesus approves it. And and you're right that the critical race theory definitely an element of that. Yeah, that white people have to atone and having the priest wash the feet now. I know the Catholic Church just the Pope just allowed blessings for gay marriage and stuff. They don't allow the, the the marriage in the church, but they can bless them. 
And look, I don't have any problem with that. I really don't. And it's, I'm Catholic and all this. Uh, there's, you know, other things to worry about. I know a lot of people, it bothers them. I get it. But that, the thing that bothered me about the commercial, it's just a commercial, but it bothered me because it was just so sacrilegious having a guy in a priest costume washing yeah. the feet of a clear transgender person. Yeah, pretty bad. And just because Jesus washed the feet of one of his apostles doesn't mean he'd go around, he went around washing everybody's feet mm -hmm. either. And he, he, he did tell you, gave a lot of lessons in life and a lot of rules you have to follow. And you, and, and you, when you read the Bible, uh, it's full of life lessons and the whole Bible is seen as the word of God. And Jesus's section is just in four books. They talk about him throughout the Old Testament, but the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, are called the Gospels because those are the ones that talk about his life and have his words directly in them and his teachings directly in them. But but to to take that one thing so out of context and use it for this woke oh, yeah. ad to me was disgusting. Very bad. Taste. Uh, it really upset me, and uh, you know, I, I I thought it was one of the most abhorrent th ads I've ever seen. And it, believe me, I'm not the only one. People on I was on Twitter the whole night during the game because it was so interesting to see what people were saying. And most Christians were appalled by it, of course, and most liberals, which are they're not religious people, they don't have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in them. They just think it's funny. You know, they don't get it, but well, I yeah, thought it was, you just, know, uh, the, the, I thought it was a disgrace. What it, what it was the is- The abortion clinic really, really the, made me upset. The, what the ad was, was propaganda, right? They were trying to pass it off as a complete, Christian ad. Complete, When it's not a Christian ad. No, and, exactly. you know, and you know, the thing about foot washing, a lot of churches, Catholic church does this, they'll do like have a- have an event at the church where the priest will wash people's feet That's and right. stuff. They do. It's symbolic. So it's symbolic. There's a, there's, yeah, there's a lot of the, of the foot washing symbolism at, 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 at yeah. churches. And that's what this commercial and was it, using, the symbolism of the foot washing. It was very clever yeah. um, propaganda. Yeah. So now the, the media are saying that um, Trump gave Putin the okay to attack our NATO allies. Okay. That's not what Trump said. Not at all. Um, when, when Trump was in his first term, he got NATO. You know, NATO is a big scam with the military industrial complex. Okay. The reason that we spend all the money is because our politicians s sell out to the military industrial complex to fund and supply NATO, all right? But NATO's not paying their dues anymore to NATO. We're paying for everything again, like we were before Trump's first term. And what he said is he said one of the leaders came to him and said, if uh, we don't pay our dues and Putin attacks, will you help us? And he says, no. And you know, we have done nothing but not just pay money, but paid with blood. Europe, Europe causes these wars. They it's cause incredible. Europe caused the First World War, the Second World War. They're responsible for the Iraq War because they gave the WMD lie right to 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 our government. They they got this war going on with Ukraine and Russia. That's World another war European one. war. Yes, they started, I said that. Yeah, one which led to two. Exactly. So so how many Americans? have died fighting for these European wars, and now we're still paying for everything Not to all mention these decades that, they later. brought slavery to this country. That's right. And how many men died in the Civil War exactly. because the Europeans brought so, slavery here? So, you know, Europe has n not been anything but a plague, a poison, and just death and destruction <laughs> yes. um, forever. Yeah. And, um, you know, all these 1619 project people, that's Europe, okay? We, there was no United States in 1619. No, they were European colonies. They were all, that's exactly so right. They were Europeans. It, it, I mean, I think The idea of America wasn't even anybody's, exactly. in anybody's head back then. I think it's time to let Europe just take care of Europe and leave, you know, get, get out of there. Stop paying for everything and let them defend themselves. Well, Trump had said, you know, he, he says things and he says things in a way, um, you know, sometimes he's a little sarcastic and that's just the way he yeah. talks. And, and they're saying in this article on Breitbart um, that they're not taking what he said literally. They understand what he means. Um, you know, like the New York Times, they're saying that he's literally calling for Russia to destroy, um, you know, the people that don't pay. You didn't pay. This is what Trump said. You didn't pay your delinquent. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell exactly. they want. 
you got to pay, you got to pay your bills. So, but then it said um, in this article, many European leaders concede he basically has a point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nowhere close to where they need to be if Europe is to take primary responsibility for its own defense. I mean, it's absurd the way things go, the way that people run this country and the European countries. And it's absurd how much money is given and how people don't pay their bills. Um, and, uh, and and he, he gets it. I mean, he knows what's going on. He calls it out and they don't like it. You know, they don't like that. He, that he shines a light on these things that they don't want people to know about. Now, I I just want to mention, I don't want to get into the details of this one either, but there was another, uh, it's, it's interesting. The controversy and all the discussion of Super Bowl ads involves other things. So, uh, Bobby Kennedy had an ad and he apologized to his family for the ad. His family came out to, you know. He did not do the ad. He Kennedy's said. Kennedy's have killed people. They've been accused of raping people and just done terrible things. I never remember the Kennedy family asking members of their family after they killed people or were accused of rape to apologize. It was that, a great ad, by the way. Yeah. I, I thought it was he should very have apologized good. to them. It cost seven million dollars. Uh, it was not his money. It was a super PAC, mm-hmm. uh, and he said by law they cannot tell him what the ad is, so he had no clue. Uh, and I thought it was a fantastic, very clever ad because it harkened back to the 60s and his father and JFK. And it was very the graphics were really amazing and it got good responses. So his family's all upset because of his stance on his health care issues. Well, that he has out with of, drugs with, uh, you know, out all of, that stuff out of everyone left uh, in the Kennedy family. Robert Kennedy Jr. is about the only one who actually knew them. You know, I was surprised. He was like mm-hmm. about 14 years old when his dad was yeah, killed. Yeah, he was like 15. So he knew his dad. Yeah. Um, he does remember President Kennedy. Uh, his his cousin, President Kennedy's daughter, may have a blur memory of, of him, but he actually remembers knowing them. Uh, these other yeah. Kennedys, how many of them are around that still remember them that knew them? Not many. No. So who are they? And, and, there's, and the, another thing with the Kennedys, uh, Bobby Kennedy, the, the senior— and President Kennedy are American icons. They're not exclusive to their family. He should not have apologized to them. So right now, as we speak, the Fannie Willis hearing is going on in Georgia. Oh, I hope she gets arrested. And um, we'll see what happens. My prediction is that she is just going to be removed. Oh, from the case. Possibly disbarred. But but they'll have, they'll have a um, – I don't know if this is just something the judge is deciding right now or if they're going to have some kind of court trial – but I think she's going to be just removed in the world place or with somebody else and yeah. move forward. That's been my prediction. Do you think she will? You think they're going to arrest her? They're going to obviously have to no, do no, something about it. No, 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 not it. with it. This hearing is just about removing her from the case. Yeah, but, that's what they're going to do but, today. But I, aven- I don't know if the decision will come today, but eventually I think there's maybe a 60, 70% chance that she ends up getting arrested. Be- it was reported over the weekend that she was living with her gigolo boyfriend before she hired him. Wow. So they concocted this whole thing together. They were probably lying in bed together one night and decided, let's go after Trump and let's do this and let's do that. They'll make me attorney general or I'll be governor. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. This will be great. And let me contact the White House and I'll go have a meeting with Biden and we'll do, you know, because things things were going on in Georgia and stuff. And uh, they thought, well, let's take advantage of this situation. Uh, You're in a position of power. We can do it. Fannie Willis is in big Big well, she's trouble. obviously very corrupt. She gave, not only was she paying off her gigolo boyfriend. Who was married. She gave him so much. She's given him like almost $700,000. Maybe by this time more because when the story broke, it was wow. 650 some thousand. But that was like a while ago. So she may have hit the 700000 mark by this point when they do all the accounting. You can't do that. She is she has committed the crime she's accusing Trump of committing. Exactly. Well, that's what people do, Brian. That's human nature. People accuse others of what they do themselves. Exactly. You see it over and over and over again with liberals, especially. Okay, like Hillary Clinton, the things she says about Trump are things she's done. Exactly. It's 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 projection is what mm-hmm. it does. And and people sometimes they don't even realize mm-hmm. they're doing it, but it's a way to deflect the guilt off of yourself That's right. and put it onto somebody else. That's right. Well, listen, we are out of time for today, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks so much for listening, and we will talk to you next time.